Phil here from Wings of Pegasus and welcome to another analysis video. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. So on the agenda tonight, we have Doyle Dykes and this is coming from 2012 and it's gonna be his arrangement of freight train. So let's get Doyle up on screen and see how he gets on. This is something I play. We haven't played this in a long time until this morning. I'm just gonna jump in here straight away just to point out the amount of detail there is in the subtlety, always with the top players. Just in that little section right towards the end there, we had those artificial harmonics that Doyle is throwing in by extending that first finger. If you play guitar, you know what they are. If you don't, then all it is is changing the position of the harmonics on the guitar in relation to whatever chord you're playing. So if you move a chord higher up the guitar, it means that those harmonics are gonna change position and the way that Doyle does it and all acoustic guys will do it is you actually pick the string with the fingers below the second finger or even the third finger and you're touching your finger over the point where you'll find those harmonics. Doyle throws it in so seamlessly and so effortlessly and then that cherry on top that side to side vibrato on that very last harmonic it just sounds so cool but let's get back into this.
we go. So what a masterclass in fingerstyle that was. The way that Doyle just plays with that running bass line, you know, Chet Atkins, Mo Travis, certainly players that he looked up to when he was learning and heavily influenced by them as well. But just that whole counter melody at the top, because some of the lines going on there, he's actually playing them not as chord shapes. He's playing them as independent lead lines with a third finger and that little finger hammer-ons pull-offs and slides and it's all thrown so seamlessly in there with that constant running bass line it's so impressive to watch just a marvel at the way that he throws it together the other thing is that we've got so many bar chord shapes here and playing on acoustic absolutely nowhere to hide i always say that but these chord shapes it's so easy to be a little bit off with a bar chord especially when you're changing so quickly as doyle is here but everything's absolutely spot on. The clarity is absolutely spot on as well. And some of the things that he throws in there that are so expressive because a lot of players might just play this whole piece at one level and not put in that expression. But Doyle has that control with the right hand where he can start to pick softly and then put, add in a little bit more aggression. And he'll do that in certain runs and it gives it a totally different dimension. And when you're listening to a performance like this and watching it, you get pulled into this musical bubble where you're just appreciating the music. I was going to stop it a little bit earlier than the end, but I thought I just had to listen to it to the end because it's just so impressive just to hear that whole piece the whole way through. But what I mean by getting pulled into this bubble is that you're just appreciating the art of the music but then when you actually come out of that bubble and you're looking at the techniques like I mentioned those counter melodies that finger style those harmonics at the beginning and then when you do take a step back away from the beautiful music that's being made and also just the technical ability that Doyle's got in getting this down you can start to analyze well what have we actually got going on here we've got one guy on an acoustic guitar and a bassist and that is it. And by the way, we've got Dave Pomeroy on bass here. So big shout out to him because they haven't got a drummer here who's going to be keeping them in time with each other. They're just absolutely locked in to their own playing. So just that in itself is so impressive. The fact that there's no lead vocal, no backing vocals, no keys. There's nothing here apart from an acoustic guitar and a bass, which is when you take that step back and you just try and accept that for a second, we've been entertained for over four minutes here with just an acoustic guitar and a bass guitar. And it's something that so few people can do and put this amount of expression into it. And Doyle and Dave are absolutely all over it for this whole four minutes because they do not miss a beat throughout this whole performance. But straight away, you can see Doyle's technical ability, just the way in the intro that he threw in those artificial harmonics but he has been playing a hell of a long time of course he's got his hours in and I think since the age of 11 he's known the direction that he actually wanted to go in in terms of music and playing guitar and when he was young a guy called Barry Lackey attended his church one day and Barry got out a thumb pick and just started playing in the Chet Atkins Mel Travis style of having that bass note going all the time those bass runs with that counter melody at the top end of the guitar and and Doyle was just blown away by this guy playing. And that very same day, Doyle actually went for dinner around Barry's house and Barry showed him the techniques and some of those patterns with the right hand so that Doyle could start to get used to playing those root notes, those bass notes, bass runs, and that counter melody up at the top. So from then on, he was absolutely hooked on that style of playing. He was already a big fan of Mel Travis and Chet Atkins at that time anyway. Earlier in his career, he toured with the Stamps Quartet and also with Grandpa Jones, who was the star of a show called The Grand Ole Opry. And I've mentioned that show a few times on this channel with varying success on the pronunciation, but hopefully I'm getting close. He also plays at churches and he doesn't announce when he's gonna be playing. It's not like he's advertising, oh, I'm gonna be there on that day playing this. He just turns up and plays and entertains whoever's there on the day. So very much playing for the enjoyment, playing for the love and just a classic old school musician just playing for the love of music. And Doyle was endorsed by and represented Taylor Guitars for many years and Bob Taylor, the owner of Taylor Guitars, said that Doyle has represented the brand for longer than any other artist and has introduced so many other players to their brand. The guitar that Doyle's playing in this video is one of his signature series with Taylor and his signature series is just called DDSM which just stands for Doyle Dykes Signature Model. And another thing to mention is people might have been listening to Doyle throughout his career over the years 
years and been impressed with his consistency of playing. But actually in 2002, he had a brain tumor that was operated on and the surgeon compressed his brain, which meant after the operation, he had a temporary loss in balance. So he actually had to learn to walk again. And he was also left with no hearing on his right side. He was deaf. So this is in 2012. So all of this playing, Doyle is actually deaf on the right side. Certainly watching this video and listening to it and seeing all those subtle changes in dynamics, the way that Doyle expresses through that guitar, you wouldn't know that he's lost the hearing on the right side because it is absolutely on it the whole time. So interesting to listen to. But thank you so much for suggesting this video for me to take a look at and keep those suggestions coming in the comments below. Let me know what you guys think. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. And I'll see you guys at the next one. Bro.